Have you ever wondered what brings an aircraft to a stop during taxiing or after landing? In this video today we are going to be looking at the braking system of an aircraft. Welcome and enjoy the video. An aircraft brake slows the aircraft down and stops it within a reasonable amount of time. The second function of an aircraft brake is to hold the aircraft stationary during engine run-up or engine ground run. The third function of the braking system of an aircraft is to enable steering the aircraft during ground maneuvers. This is achieved through the use of differential braking. Aircraft brakes are installed on the main wheels of the landing gear. Every single wheel has a brake unit installed for the particular wheel. The nose gear or the tail gear of an aircraft doesn't have a brake unit installed. For those aircraft that are retractable or the aircraft that have a retractable landing gears, the nose gear has a panel or a strip inside the wheel well that stops the rotation of the nose gears when the landing gear is retracted. If you know the reason why this is important, kindly put it in the comment below. The aircraft brakes are controlled through a mechanical or hydraulic connection between the, the brake units and the rudder pedals in the flight deck. The left rudder pedal controls the brakes in the left main gear and the right rudder pedal controls the brake on the right main landing gear. An aircraft brake converts the kinetic energy into heat energy through friction and through this process braking is achieved. The design of an aircraft brake is influenced by the size, the weight, and the landing speed of an aircraft. There are three types of landing gear brakes that can be installed on an aircraft. One, there is a single disc brake system. Two, there is a dual disc brake system. And thirdly, there is a multiple disc brake system. These three types of braking system fall under two main classification of aircraft braking system. One is the direct braking system and two is the indirect braking system. The single disc and the dual disc braking system fall under the direct braking system. For a direct braking system, the braking pressure that is applied directly on the rudder pedals is the pressure that is directly applied on the brakes. For an indirect braking system, there is a brake control valve or brake control metering valve that modulates the pressure or controls the pressure of the brake from the pressure source to the brake unit. So the difference between the direct braking system and the indirect braking system is the installation of a valve or a control unit that is found on the indirect braking system, which is not there for the direct braking system. For the single disc braking system, we have a single disc bolted to the wheel of an aircraft that rotates as the wheel of the aircraft rotates. We also have a caliper that is installed or that is bolted on the axle flange of the aircraft. This caliper has linings inside that hold the disc, the brake disc on the wheel whenever the brake is applied. When these linings hold the disc, friction is applied on the brakes and this is what brings the aircraft to a stop. This is what is known as a single disc system or single disc braking system. For a dual disc braking system, which also falls under the direct braking classification of aircraft brakes, we have two discs installed on each main wheel. These discs are separated by a carrier 
in between them. This system is still the same as the single disc braking system. The, the discs are installed on the main wheel and they rotate with the main wheel. And we have a caliper that has the linings and the piston that uh, whenever the brake pressure is applied, they apply a braking pressure on the disc, uh, causing friction that causes the aircraft to slow down and eventually to stop. Finally, we look at the multiple disc type of braking system. A multiple disc brake system is made up of a bearing carrier, or also called the brake housing. This housing has piston and uh, springs incorporated into the housing of the brake. Then we also have a pressure plate, and then we have an alternating stack of uh, steel plates and uh, copper or bronze plates alternating in between the pressure plate and the back plate. The steel plates are the stators and the bronze or the copper plates are the rotors. They alternate together. You can have three steel plates and three copper or bronze uh, plates, which are known as the rotors, alternating in between. And then we have a back plate at the end and a pressure plate on the other end. The rotors of a multiple disc braking system are keyed in to the wheel of the aircraft and as a result, as the wheel of the aircraft rotates, the rotors rotate with the wheels of the aircraft. The stators remain stationary during rotation of the wheel. When the brake is applied, the piston in the housing extend and apply a pressure on the pressure plate and this pressure compresses the stack of rotors and stators, thereby creating friction in the brake unit. And this is what brings the aircraft to a stop. This type of braking system was used on old large transport aircraft. For modern aircraft, a similar design is used, but it is called a segmented multiple disc system. The segmented multiple disc has some segments of the face of the rotors and the stators. These segments assist in heat dissipation and thereby rapid cooling down of the brakes is achieved by the use of the segments. They are more or less the same as the multiple disc braking system that we've just seen, but the only difference is that these ones have segments on the rotors and the stators that help in heat dissipation and therefore rapid cooling down of the brake units or of the braking system. There's a brake wear indicator, which is a pin that is bolted on the pressure plate and protrudes through the brake housing. When brakes are applied, the length of extension of the pin is measured in order to determine the status of the brake. This length will be able to indicate if the brake is worn or if new brake linings are required for the installed brake. This amount of protrusion is measured with brakes applied in order to get the right indication. Thank you for watching this video till the end. If you like this video, you can share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any comments or any suggestion, you can post it in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, I humbly request you to subscribe to the channel and to turn on the notifications so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. Thank you and I'll see you in the next video.